Welcome to Electra Online. Now let's review how to find the moment of inertia using calculus. So we have three classical examples. We have the thin board, we have the solid disk, and we have the solid disk with a hollow portion there. So how do we do that? Well, assuming that, uh, I'm looking for my red pen here, that we're going to rotate the disk about this point right here. Uh, how do we do that? Well, we find a small little segment on that thin board. The, the thickness of the segment is dx, and then the mass of that segment is dm. How do we find dm? Well, dm is going to be the ratio of, well, we're going to take the total mass and then multiply that times the ratio of the length of this small little segment relative to the whole length of the board, so it's dx over l. And so that will then give us the small dm. And so to find the moment of inertia of this small little segment right here, the, the di, well, realizing that the, that the moment of inertia of the entire board is going to be integral of the moment of inertia of each of these little pieces, right? So summation, uh, integral is the same as summation, so we take the moment of inertia a little piece, and then we integrate it all the way across to get the total moment of inertia. Notice that little piece is distance x away, so the moment of inertia di for that little piece is going to be the distance, is going to be the mass, dm, times the distance squared from the point of rotation. dm can then be replaced by m times dx over l. m and l are constants that come outside the integral, so we end up with x squared dx when we integrate x cubed over 3, evaluate from 0 to l over the full length of the board. When we integrate, when we plug in 0, we get nothing. Plug in L, we get L cubed over 3 divided by L. We end up with I equals 1 third ML squared. The exact answer, of course, we were already expecting, but now you see how that was derived. If we now take a solid disk, we do the same principle. We take a small little segment in the shape of a little ring. And so we have a small amount of mass dm. The ring is at a distance small r from the center of rotation. Again, assuming that we're going to rotate about the center mass like this. And now we need to evaluate what dm is. So dm is going to be the mass of the object times the ratio of the area of this little ringlet right here divided by the total area of the disk. Because so we presume that the mass is proportional to the area if it's a thin disk and the mass is evenly or the density is evenly distributed or the mass is evenly distributed so we have even proportional density. All right, the area that's a little ring is going to be the circumference, 2 pi r times the width, dr. So that's the area of the small little ringlet. We divide it by the area of the whole disk, which is pi r squared. Notice that the pi's cancel out, so dm ends up being m times 2r dr over r squared. So the little segment has a moment of inertia. Now notice all the mass will be at the same distance, little r, away from the center of rotation. So moment of inertia for that little segment is dm, the mass of that segment, times the distance from the center mass squared, which is r squared. dm can then be replaced by what we have over there. So we end up with m2 r dr over r squared times little r squared. All the constants are taken out, 2 m n the radius of the disk squared, those are all constant. We end up with r cubed dr, integrate to r to the fourth over four. When you evaluate from zero center mass to the outside of the disk, we end up with one half mr squared for the moment of inertia of solid disk. Again, by now that should be a familiar equation. Finally, let's do the disk with a hole inside. So we have the outside radius r1 and the inside radius r2. So we have the same principle. Again, we find m and m is going to be, uh, dm I should say, and dm is going to be equal to the mass of the whole disk divided by, or multiplied times the ratio of the surface area of the little ringlet divided by the area of the total disk. Same numerator, it'll be circumference times the thickness, 2 pi r dr times the mass of the whole disk divided by the area of the piece that's left. So we take the outside radius and we go pi r squared, take the inside radius, pi r squared, we subtract the two, and that leftover is the area of the remaining disk with the hole removed. So now again, we have the integral of all the di's. We go from the inner radius to the outer radius. Notice we have the little mass, dm times r squared, that is the moment of inertia, that little ringlet. All the mass is equal distance away from the center mass. Again, I probably should indicate that here's the center mass, and we're rotating like this. 
So we replace dm by what dm is equal to. Now we have this r1 squared minus r2 squared in the denominator, but that's a constant. So it's 2 and m that comes out of the integral. And so we're left with r cubed dr, which becomes r to the fourth over 4, evaluated from the inner limit to the outer limit. So in the numerator, we end up with, when we plug in the upper limit, we get r1 to the fourth minus, plug in lower limit, r2 to the fourth. Of course, the four comes out. Two divided by four is one half. m survives. And now we have this divided by that. Now, if we factor the numerator, notice we end up with this expression where this cancels out with the denominator, and we're just left with this portion right there, that, that uh, factor. And so therefore, the moment of inertia is one half m times r1 squared plus r2 squared. And again, by now, that should be a familiar equation that you got from the first video in this series on the moment of inertia. So at least now you can see how you can use calculus to find the moment of inertia of these typical types of shapes. But what if the shape isn't typical? Hmm. Well, let's do that on the next video to see how to use calculus on a non-typical shape for the moment of inertia. And that is how it's done.